Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at the Springfield Armory SA-35 reintroduction of the Browning High Power Pistol. Now this was released on October 25th of 2021, and uh, I got one a little bit later than that, uh, how, and I had been shooting this thing for probably three, four months, uh, actually quite a bit. I was extremely excited when this pistol came out because... Uh, you know, I, I do like the Browning High Power, and I've been looking for them for years. And you look at the cost of the them; you're looking up to two to three, four thousand dollars. Whether you want to get one made, you know, a Browning one, or you can get some of the cheaper ones made in Hungary. Um, and if you want to try to find some of the Browning commercial ones, uh, you know, Browning stopped making these things quite some time ago, uh, so they were relatively hard to find. Uh, and if you did find them, they were extremely expensive. And uh, I did some reviews on them in the past, and the ones I had were relatively old, and we had problems with them. So they didn't really show uh, the real quality of the Browning High Power. However, the pistol that uh, Springfield came out with was a exact replica with some very, very minor changes. Now, the Browning High Power was, uh, it was again, it was a John Browning design. It was 9mm, and it saw service in World War II with both uh, Allied and Axis. The Germans used this, uh, the British used it. This was used by over 90 countries and still in use today. Um, you can see still see uh, you know troops such as the uh, up in Canada are still we're still using them. Um, and they're, they're still a very relevant pistol today. This was one of the game changers uh, that really made the 1911 obsolete. You compare this to the Walther P P38. Those were the two guns that really made the 1911 obsolete because basically you have, say, look at our M9. You look at the M9, you had the magazine capacity uh, of the Browning High Power with a, with, your tr with a double single action trigger of the P38. So basically you had the High Power and the uh, P38 combined, and now we have an M9 pistol. So it was very, very influential. It was the first high capacity uh, 9mm, uh, 12, 13 round magazines. Now, uh, when... Springfield Armory introduced this. They introduced a 15-round magazine. So, as of 2018, when Browning discontinued it, it was uh, it was sort of sad seeing you know some of the higher quality manufacturers that uh, discontinued the pistol. However, when Springfield did it, they did it right. They brought back the pistol and they took care of some of the most important criticisms that they had. And the most important criticism was the magazine safety. Now, anybody who's used the Browning High Power knows that if you drop the magazine, you pull the trigger, nothing happens. That's been a uh, that's been debated for many years. You see pistols such as the Smith and Wesson uh, 59 series, 69 series. These all had those safeties, and some police departments even went as far as to disconnect them because they did not want to have the fact that, that when you drop the gun to reload and uh, you couldn't fire that round that was in the chamber if it was an emergency. So that didn't like it. So, also those of you who are familiar with Browning High Powers knows that the triggers absolutely sucked. Uh, they were very spongy, uh, and a lot of that had to do with the mechanism they used for uh, for the d magazine disconnect. So that was one of the major changes that uh, the Springfield Armory did was they eliminated the, the magazine safety, and they increased the quality of the trigger tremendously. You had very little take-up on it. It was a very nice trigger, close to that as some of the 1911s, but you did have a little bit of a take-up in there. But once you hit that shelf and pulled the trigger, it was very, very nice. And again, they went to a 15 round magazine. So other changes they had done is they went to an extended safety. They used an extended safety on here compared to the original and also the sights. They use modern sights. You do have a white dot in the front and you have a black in the rear or higher profile. So it's a much nicer, uh, much nicer sights. And again, the magazine. As you can see, they used the rounded hammer uh, instead of the instead of the spurred hammer. Now, unfortunately, as you can see from my hand, you can see the mark on my hand from the uh, from, from firing this gun. So just because I have big hands, uh, the hammer will still strike the web of my hand. And you know, we fired a lot. Of, I fired a lot of rounds out of this gun. Uh, this was one that I tested probably five or six times. I'd taken it out. And we're probably talking close to a thousand rounds uh, of ammunition. So we put a lot of rounds through this thing. And this is a similar thing that happens to me with the uh, M1911s. So looking at the gun, we have basically the Browning High Power. The way the pistol was designed by Springfield, most all the parts are interchangeable except for the trigger. That is the main parts that are different. You're looking at the actions, your modified Browning linkless uh, short recoil system. The barrel, you're looking at a 4.7 inch cold hammer forge barrel, uh, one turn and 10 inches, six right. Again, a good cold hammer forge barrel is a great thing. Both the slide and the frame are, are from forged from carbon steel with a matte blue finish on it. As we can see from the safety, it's extended. Uh, we have the left side magazine release. 
Now the checkering and the walnut grips is, is very, very nice compared to some of the earlier ones. So they did put a, a much nicer set of wooden grips on here. Now again, the weight, 31.5 ounces. This is a steel gun. This is not a lightweight Glock. Length, uh, 7.8 inches and a height of 4.8 inches. So we're gonna go through disassembly. So again, we're gonna make sure it's empty. Move the magazine first. We're gonna check to make sure it's empty. So what we gotta do here is we pull the slide back to the rear and engage the slide, slide lock. We have the safety, we lift upward on the safety, and that locks the slide to the rear. Then on the right hand side, we're gonna push inward on this assembling lever, push inward, then we can pull that right out. And now the slide goes right off. Underneath we can see the recoil spring. We're gonna pull that, lift out, lift the barrel out, and there we have this assembled pistol. As you can see, we got some wear on here. As I said, we fired nearly a thousand rounds out of this. I sort of lost count uh, after 500, but we fired uh, close to a thousand rounds out of it. You can see the wear marks on here. The pistol was very, very well made. The slide uh, frame fit was quite nice. It's a very, very simple design. You can see our safety here, our hammer, uh, our ejector. Now the machining on the slide, everything was very nice. Now please keep in mind, this does not have a firing pin block, just like the original one does. So this is one that if it was dropped, you do have a possibility of it going off uh, from, the, from the muzzle, from the inertia of the firing pin. Uh, I will say you got a pretty good uh, firing pin spring on here, but uh, I still would not recommend carrying uh, this gun uh, with a cock and locked condition, uh, just due to the way uh, these are. Um, People do carry them, the people who are comfortable, you know, if you're comfortable, you know, so be it. Uh, just my recommendation. You can see we have the linkless design, but we have the same kind of a locking mechanism as the 1911. As you can see, we have a raw uh, stainless steel barrel on here. So for reassembly, we drop that right back in like so. This can get a little bit tricky. Uh, the way you install the recoil spring assembly, drop it right in the front, push all the way in. And there you have it. You want to make sure that this is uh, straight across here. And you make your circle there for reassembly. Put it back on the frame. You pull back to the rear. And we want to engage that manual safety. Now we take our disassembling latch lever. We drop it in. And we just push it right in. Drop the, the manual safety. And there you go. And again, we have a very crisp pull. Very, very nice pull. Again, 15 round magazine. This, this will accept any Browning high power magazines. I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this to the range and we're gonna see how it shoots.
as you see, we showed you many different pictures, uh, many videos. Uh, this uh, this pistol was shot, as I said, many, many, many times. Uh, I was fortunate enough to find a whole bunch of magazines for it, so we were able to load up about 12 magazines at a time. Uh, for as far as ammunition, we want to thank our friends over at Copper Customs for providing us this Oscar Sun uh, ammunition. As you know, during this whole COVID time, uh, ammunition had been quite scarce, and we got pretty uh, much in trouble with being able to get 9mm ammunition, and the guys over at Copper were uh, gracious enough to donate me a couple of cases of the Oscar Sun ammunition, uh, Turkish ammunition. Uh, that was a majority of what we put through it, but we also had some others as well. Uh, Black Hills 115 grain full metal jacket. We had uh, Seller and Beloit uh, 124 grain full metal jacket. Now, traditionally, Browning High Powers are specifically hardball guns. They were not designed for uh, any of the modern hollow points. However, we did put some of the modern hollow points through it, such as the SIG V-Crown. Uh, we also had tried some of the uh, Federal HST, and they cycled without a problem. Now, the Browning High Power does have a little bit of a stout recoil compared to mostly your modern, your modern guns. Um, you got metal on metal hit, but for as far as reliability, it's stellar. Uh, the only time these things really ever malfunction is if you have a bad magazine. Uh, fortunately, all the magazines that we had were good magazines, and we did not have a single malfunction in close to a 1,000 rounds uh, of, of shooting. Uh, accuracy, I was very pleased with, as you can see from the target. Um, again, it's a combat pistol. It's not designed to put all the bullets through the same holes. It's designed to poke holes in people and have them bleed out. It's not designed to put one bullet behind the other. Uh, and it serves that purpose uh, excellent. As you can see, we're shooting our, our challenge targets with it. And again, those of you guys who want to add some fun to your shooting, uh, the steel targets are just awesome. You know, that, that immediate feedback is is, is awesome. Um, you know, can we need you check, you check out on their site. You can use our code SAS and you can get 10% off of any of their targets they have. Again, it's really cool. They're, they're, they were a lot of fun. Overall, Springfield hit it out of the ballpark with us. Uh, we now have a modern produced uh, pistol. You know, if you look at the way they were, you know, the guns were produced prior to the machining versus today's CNC machines, obviously your pistols today are going to be vastly superior because you can hold much tighter tolerances it's just with a CNC machine where you didn't have that option, uh, you know, earlier generations. So you're looking at a modern made pistol, CNC machines. Uh, the fit and finish is excellent. Trigger is excellent. Uh, this is really a, a, an excellent reproduction showing the modernization uh, of manufacturing. Uh, those of you who are really into uh, these earlier guns, this is really a great gun, and it's not a safe queen either. Uh, most of the high powers that people have these days are World War II ones. These are ones that uh, that are collector's items. Well, this is one that they can buy and they can take out and they can actually shoot uh, and enjoy uh, what John Browning did all those years ago. So, I hope you all enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.